The AMG A45 was always the entrance model into the world of AMG. And then, about half a year ago, they presented the A35. But that doesn't automatically mean that there will be no new A45. Parallel to the presentation of the new AMG A45, AMG also presents the new CLA version of the AMG 45. Of course, the design is quite different, but regarding to the power and the drive, it's very, very similar. And this is it, the brand new AMG A45. And from the front, you instantly recognize it must be the new one because that one features this new radiator grille with this 12 upright bars. You may know that from the AMG GT models. When you look at the front, it looks wide, massive. And one reason is we have a very flat bonnet, two big power dumps, and the car is about 60 mil wider than the A35. And to give this car this extreme shark nose look, you do find extra flat and narrow headlamps, of course, LED technology. And to get the car the air it needs to breathe, you have these big extra air intakes down here with its two extra fins. From the side, you can see this very flat nose of the car. And in these wider wheel arches, you do find 19 inch alloys as standard. And to give the car more, let's say, yeah, make the car closer to the ground. We have these extra fins here on the side. For the extra sporty look, you do find the rear view mirror here on the shoulder of the doors. Very nice detail. We look at the rear, we have a very short overhang at the rear that gives the car pressure, muscle and power. And I think very important is this rooftop spoiler here to give you the downforce you need for fast driving. At the rear of our AMG A45, you do find this splitted, very thin, narrow taillights in LED technology, of course. And to give the car the extra sporty look, you do find four exhaust pipes. They do have 82 mil in diameter at the standard version. With our car, it's 90 each. And to give this wide, sporty look, the extra kick at the end, you do find this massive diffuser. The A45 comes in two different versions. The base model offers 387 horsepower while the S model offers 421. And this is, by the way, 40 more than the predecessor offers. Um, regarding to the um, torque, the base model delivers 460 newton meters and the top version delivers 500 newton meters of maximum torque. The engine is combined with all-wheel drive and, of course, always with the AMG automatic gearbox. There's no real reason to talk about the craftsmanship and materials here in the A45 because everything is as expected from an AMG. On top of this, we do have this very nice yellow stitching here, which really lifts the interior to the next level. And then you do find this widescreen infotainment in front of you combined with MBUX. And so you have everything on board that makes your drive absolutely enjoyable. The bucket seats here in the A45 AMG are really comfortable and they offer loads and loads of support and so you can really feel very nice and easy while driving. The only downside is that the headrest could be a bit more higher for people like me. AMG says they put a new clutch into the rear axle to deliver the optimum amount of torque to the right or the left rear wheel to make the drive even more dynamic. And when you then drive the first bends and curves, you instantly feel that was a great idea. The suspension of the A45 is really stiff and this is the same when you use the comfort mode. So this is for me a downside when you, for instance, drive through a city or on bumpy roads because this is not comfortable anymore. To get a better idea of what the A45S really can deliver, I'm going onto the Jarama racetrack by now. By the way, on this racetrack, Niki Lauda won his first Grand Prix. So next to me now is Bernd Schneider. I think everybody knows him. Bernd, I have a question. You drove the new A45 AMG already on this track. Is this a car that belongs to the track? Absolutely. This is a, a car, well, of course, made the public road. Uh, it's normal as an AMG, but also fits really home at uh, race tracks like here at Jarama. Um, with this very tight corners, with the four wheel we have in the car, it makes uh, we have no traction problems. The fast corner of the car is really stable, so so far we really enjoyed this car here in Jarama Racetrack. Uh, when we talk about uh, driving such a car on a racetrack, and we notice from standard racing that the car is getting slower and slower, 
lap after lap. What about that one? Does it work the whole day? Um, actually, this year we have got very hot temperatures. We are around uh, 42 degrees, so the, the tire suffers a bit, but the main issue is that the car keeps the balance. So it's not suddenly starting understeer oversteering, so it's still consistency balanced. Of course, the lap time goes down a bit after a while. This is quite normal. We got this experience from racing as well. Uh, in these temperatures, but the balance is the same and this makes you have fun the whole day, even if the clip went down a little bit. When we talk about lap times, is it the car that makes the pace or is there anything else? Um, of course, the driver makes it also different, but this car is, um, is built for public good, but can do the racetrack really good and it's quite easy uh, to handle. And this makes uh, the difference that you're getting in the car, you feel comfortable, even if you're not professional drivers, that the car is predictable and that you just get in and you find your own limits quite easy. So now it's time to go on the racetrack in the AMG A45S and I'm quite interested to see how that car works on that track. <laughs> that really is great fun and I have to say Bernd didn't lie to me that car really is nice on the racetrack so what I really do like is the noise in the car great this should be part of a yeah test drive before you buy the car and I think afterward you will not even think about how much it will cost you monthly because that's so much fun so Bernd really explained it perfectly. That car is not working on hard edges, so it doesn't just say works, doesn't work. It really gives you um, yeah, some signals on time, so you can really um, adjust your driving the way that the car will always work on the track without any problems or any, let's say, hard issues. So really, really nice to drive. The brakes are very nice, very, very sensitive. You can really do brake the way you want. And the car accelerates as it sounds. Absolutely fantastic. So that is it, my drive on the circuit. What a great fun. Fantastic. If you take a look at the competitors of the AMG A45S, the list is relatively short. Although there are plenty of sporty compact cars in the market like the Volkswagen Golf R, Ford Focus RS or Hyundai i30N. But none of them can keep up with the AMG when it comes to power and performance. Only the BMW M2 competition with its 410 horsepower or the 400 horsepower Audi RS3 come close to the 421 horsepower of the AMG. In terms of price, the competitors are in no way different to the sporty Mercedes. The Audi RS3 cost from 56,000 euros and the BMW M2 competition from 61,900 euros in Germany. It is important to know that both the Audi and the AMG always have an automatic as well as four-wheel drive on board. The more purist-minded BMW features rear-wheel drive and a six-speed manual transmission as standard. AMG says they put in larger air valves to optimize the gas exchange. Compared to the A35, AMG says the engine of the A45 has been turned around by 180 degrees to get more fresh air into the engine. AMG says they use nanoslide technology to reduce friction between the piston and the cylinder. But more important is the result. This engine gives you loads of fun and when you push the pedal to the metal, you really do not care why it does what it does. AMG says the A45 should take about 8.3 litres per 100 km driven. During our test drive we used about let's say 10 litres but that was a normal drive so I think if you really push the car to the limit you should expect something above 13 maybe 15. That was my test drive with the new Mercedes AMG A45S and AMG promises loads of power, loads of performance and extremely driving fun. And this is exactly what that car delivers. It doesn't matter if you drive on road or on track, it's always a great pleasure and always great fun to perform with that car. When we talk about the price, they didn't tell us what the car will cost when it 
comes to the market, but I expect something about 55 for the standard version, about a bit less than 60 for this um, S version in Europe, in Euro. But when you look at the car, what I really like with it is the exterior design because it does look like a real AMG, not like a standard A-Class. When you look at the interior, the materials, the craftsmanship, the infotainment, everything is at the highest standard that you can expect from a car like AMG. And I have to say, if you talk about performance and compact class, I think this is one of the cars you definitely have to try to drive.